Can the Dark Knight untangle the wicked web of Simon Saint and the Scarecrow? Well, let's hop into the pages of Batman issue number 109 and find out together, shall we? So once again, this issue opens up with a little prelude showing us Batman under the captivity of Scarecrow. Obviously, Bruce has battled against the fear toxin before, but he says this time it all feels different and strange. Batman is also desperately trying to put together his memories and actually remind himself of what brought him to this scenario, what horrible dark secret that Scarecrow is trying to keep from him by manipulating his mind. Now, in the main timeline, we hook back up with Bruce not long after his run-in with Miracle Molly and the Unsanity Collective. Needless to say, this meeting kind of shook Bruce to his core, as they were not the villains he had built them up in his mind as being. In fact, part of him is even intrigued by their whole free-your-mind approach, a procedure that would actually manage to purge him of all of his long, deeply held trauma, but would he be the same person at the other end of it? Who knows? Oracle gets Batman up to speed on everything he missed during his little trip to Wonderland. Apparently, the Scarecrow has struck again, and several more of his effigies have been set up in important places all over the city. The major Gotham media companies, who have already been played like fiddles this whole time, absolutely eat up this new fear-based coverage with a spoon, and because of that, Gotham is teetering on the edge of pure anarchy. Batman notes that the most insidious part of Scarecrow and Saint's new plot is that Crane doesn't even have to douse the city in fear talks anymore. They're already scared enough, and it's only going to take one little push for people to start eating each other in the streets. Batman needs to assemble his war chest, and quickly, Oracle says that they should call in the rest of the Bat family to assist in this situation, but for some reason, Bruce doesn't want outside help. Because, hey, we just introduced a bunch of new characters, so they should probably do something in the upcoming Fear State storyline, like Ghostmaker and Harley Quinn. You'll recall that Ghostmaker was actually tasked with keeping an eye on Harley, who's been running around the streets of Gotham trying to make it as an actual, real-deal superhero. It seems Maker actually likes Harley and respects the journey that she's been on, from supervillain to amoral government agent to now a person actively defending the streets she once terrorized. He even trusts her enough to bring her back to his own personal bat cave, The Haunt. Get it? Because he's a ghost? In fact, this entire place basically screams, My dick's bigger than Batman's. My dinosaur's twice the size that his is. We also learn a bit more about Ghostmaker this issue. He says that a doctor like Harley Quinn slapped him with the psychopath label when he was eight years old, and he never looked back since, figuring that if he didn't feel fear and didn't feel empathy, then the least he could do is try and use that to make the world a better place. So, basically, Basically, he's Dexter meets Sherlock. This rather unexpected meeting of the fractured minds, though, ends up getting interrupted by the gardener, who, as we discover in this issue, Harley actually already knew. Turns out, despite this lady's whole I'm a supervillain aesthetic, she actually isn't. She was Pamela Isley's college roommate and girlfriend back in the day. As well as an accomplished eco-terrorist in her own right, Gardner is here now actually bringing warning to Harley, saying that Poison Ivy is still alive and deep underground in Gotham. But that after the destruction of her beautiful garden in Joker War, she has been twisted, corrupted, lost herself, and now she may very well bring the entire city down as punishment. And wouldn't you just know it, the only person who may be able to break on through and help Ivy is Harley, but more on that in a minute as Ghostmaker and everyone else ends up getting recruited to deal with the Saint problem. Batman has already brought himself to Saint Industries to try and bring down this threat once and for all. In fact, we even get some nice connections tissue to what's going on in Detective Comics as we hear Saint mention Mr. Worth. Batman makes short worth of Simon Saint's armored assistant and lets the guy monologue a little bit about how Gotham needs strength and security. How Batman has failed one too many times but that the new Magistrate Project will do what no mass superhero could ever do and with that Saint decides to trot out his brand new Peacekeeper 1. A hulking Robocop that is able to give Batman a run for his money but of course just just because Saint has these brand new super cops doesn't mean that he can actually deploy them in Gotham without Nakano say so. Of course, if someone was to, oh, I don't know, blow up City Hall, blame it on Scarecrow and the Unsanity Collective, well, then the mayor would have absolutely no choice, right? And as the comic comes to a close, that's exactly what happens. And so that was Batman issue number 109, everybody, and I gotta give time and credit. All these different seemingly unrelated storylines are actually starting to blend together and lead into the big new story storyline Fear State. If you'd asked me only a couple months ago if all this Future State stuff would have mattered, would have actually stuck around, I probably would have said you were dreaming, but hey, here we are. 
I enjoyed the swerve with the gardener, too. For a second, I thought they had forgotten all about Poison Ivy and the Queen Ivy story that they teased. Nope, that's gonna be the next big thing, too. Also, hey, for all you speculators out there buying big first appearances like the gardener because you think they're gonna turn you a lot of money, hopefully this one teaches you sometimes they can swerve you. Overall, I think I feel comfortable giving this one an 8 out of 10. Enjoyable stuff, I tell ya. Hey there, everyone. It's your old pal, Cape Jewel, again. Thanking you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not check out my Amazon link down in the description? Yes, that's right. The Cape Jewel channel officially has its own Amazon storefront now. You can pick up a comic or anything else for that matter. And if you did, you'd really be helping me in the channel. So with that out of the way, everyone, I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.